All right, guys, I'm going to fire up the Air Max again for the year. Going to do a little bit of maintenance. I tried to uh, hide everything from the mice. So last fall, I stuck the steel wool here so that they couldn't get in there. I trapped them off from underneath with more steel wool. And I failed to see this little entryway. So I'm going to put some electrical tape on that and see if it still works but it's time to change the air filter definitely this guy needs changed see that crap that gets in there all right so i got the new one here see the difference between the old and the new do this at least once a year to fire it up for the spring i'm gonna just straight out replace it with the new one in there like that and that just locks on there and we're good to go all right so good news that even with the mice fighting the electrical aerator still pumping so that's good so now on the diffuser side of things I've been seeing on the underwater camera that one of our diffusers that when we put it out there a year ago was upside down and I just hadn't ever pulled it in. And so today was going to be the day, but instead of pulling it in while I was out there on the pontoon, I decided to throw this anchor down in the attempt that I could scrape it over and just flip it over. You can see the bubbles that are coming up here are large. It's really not diffusing any of any of the oxygen and not aerating. Basically, this diffuser was useless in its current state, but as I was messing around with this, I got this anchor on my second attempt jammed right in the footings of the diffuser, and as I started to pull it up, I was able to just slowly lift it all the way up into the boat. And this is just a good look at what these diffuser wands all the air bubbles, the diffused oxygen is getting pumped into the bottom here, but each of these wands needs some cleaning. And so this is a good annual maintenance for your aeration system. Pull your diffusers up, clean these diffuser wands off, and you'll get a lot more efficiency. Smaller bubbles pumped into the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and lower this back down and hopefully get it right side up this time all right so after a little bit of scrubbing on those these little wands are operating a lot better they look better not perfectly clean but I think this is gonna be significantly better and if I can get this down there huh that one in the top left doesn't seem to be working, but I don't have another replacement. I think that I'm just going to go down with it because, all right, I'm going to get a rope on this, lower this down there, make sure that it lands right side up, and that's going to be about 95% better than what it was doing. And yet again, the underwater camera being so resourceful, helping me guide this down, ensuring that I got it right side up this time. And you can see the diffused bubbles a lot smaller, really circulating the water from the bottom up to the top. I've gotten a few comments, people saying when we put these PVC structures in there, make sure you sand all of the surfaces with sandpaper so that algae grows on them. I'm just going to say, I don't think algae is having a hard time growing on any of the man-made habitat that we've placed in the pond. And you can see walleyes are prowling, bluegills, healthy, lots of good structure. And again, all of this stringy algae hanging off of all of these poly tubing and plastic barrels. And unfortunately, the excess leaves at the bottom just adding to the biomaterial and feeding the algae. 
Again, all of these structures we built, you can see previous videos of how we made all of these, but I didn't sand all of these surfaces, all of these trees, the PVC trees, plenty of algae growing, producing food microorganisms and the phytoplankton for the, the food chain, feeding the bluegills, and then on up to the predator fish. So here at the foot of the waterfall, we got these little grass pods growing here in the rocks that had silted in in the year and a half since we built this. I quite like the grasses. Vegetation will grow in your new pond without you planting anything, and probably more than you want. That was my fear. And in less than a year, we had all sorts of just volunteer grass, cattails, pond weed that showed up, and then algae stuck to it because of all of the nutrients that get into the pond. I mean, God just makes stuff grow. So don't fret if you don't have all of the habitat put in your pond. It will naturally grow. And this weed edge, these are dead weeds from last year, but the fish still use it to congregate in. And I've said it before on previous videos, but the golden shiners schooling through here, there's bluegill and perch, but the golden shiners here, this big fatty in the front. And we've got a reproducing crop in the pond. And at the going rate of $12 per pound to stock shiners in your pond, if they spawn enough, we won't have to stock anymore and we'll be able to pay for this fiasco. Well, not exactly, but this bluegill's gonna taste good.